أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفلائك وأناك برحمة عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني بالزيارة السلام على الحسين وعلى علي الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته والفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد The more I tried to think about something to talk about that could at least kind of exemplify my feelings on the situation, it, it was impossible. I could not explain the grief I feel, the anger I feel, the helplessness I feel about this whole situation. But the one thought that kept reoccurring in my head over and over and over again was just how lucky I am. I mean, I wake up every day in the morning and what am I thinking about? What kind of coffee am I going to make? What am I going to eat for breakfast? How am I going to get through my first hour and a half of class? Those are my biggest worries now. And even the big things, like graduating, like getting a job, like finding a place to live, pale in comparison. And you feel kind of almost guilty because you don't know what to do. You keep seeing children dying, hospitals being bombed. I mean, they tell them to go to the south because they're bombing the north and they bomb the south. Senselessness. As we already said, we're seeing human beings be tre being treated like rats, like animals. I mean, when we talk about 55 families, do we understand how big of a number that is? The father, the mother, the uncles, the cousins, the grandfather, the grandmother, all of them. Imagine an entire bloodline wiped off the face of the earth. That family no longer exists. And as my father said, I just keep coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I just keep coming back to Imam Hussein because the one thought that floated in my head when my dad was speaking about those 55 families is how they didn't have a loved one to bury them, just like how Imam Hussein didn't have a loved one. On that day, what men were left? Where were the men? When your Imam stood on the battlefield and he said, is there no one to support us? Is there no one to protect my women? We are seeing that happen on a daily basis with multiple families. And yet we sit here powerless. But at the, own, at the end of the day, the one thing we have is a lost penalty. They can take away our lives. They can take away our names. They can take away our messages. They can take away our homes. They can take away our lives. But they cannot take up lost time from time. He is my beginning and my ending. And the one thing I'd like to end off with is that we see death as something brutal. Death for us is the loss of life. We never see that person again. But what about the person who dies? 
where are they going? These people have carried a burden their entire lives. We're talking about somebody who was born, lives, and dies under the occupation. Somebody who lives 70 years of their life in an open air prison. Is there anything sweeter for that person than death? Than finally being released? Then finally standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Telling him, oh Allah, I served my time You saw what I had to go through You saw everything that happened to me Imagine the father who stands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And he tells him, oh Allah, I carried my own child in my hands as he was there You think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would deny that man paradise? based off of that moment in his life. And so again, my brothers and sisters, always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make yourselves the ones that when we hear a tragedy, we say, because truly all power is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters I want to say my dear friend Muhammad I think he expressed it beautifully in how we express our faith in this time of crisis and this time of loss of course for a lot of us we feel sad it's impossible not to every video that we see is sadder than the other one we go from the father who is carrying his child, bloody, his father begging the doctor to pronounce him as anything other than dead. We see the mother who is crying over the corpses of her children. We see the orphan who is crying over the corpses of their parents. Sadness is an absolutely true and very valid reaction. But I want to express one particular feeling that we have all been repressing for way too long and that is anger. Since before and especially during the attacks of 9-11, we the Muslim community have borne the responsibility of apologizing for what the West has deemed to be radical Islam. Every time we speak, we the Muslim community have borne the responsibility of providing some kind of excuse justifying believing in our faith we have borne the responsibility of explaining why it is that extremist groups have existed when the very cause of it exists in the white house today when the very cause of the extremism that exists is the same one who said 20 years ago were there not an israel the United States would create an Israel in order to safeguard our self-interest. So I say, let us not be sad. Let us be angry. Sayyidna, how many times has the Democratic Party come to this masjid or approach the Shia, claiming that they are somehow better than Trump, claiming that they somehow advocate for our rights? Yet how many times have they negated those promises? How many times have we failed to uphold what it is truly that the Muslim community needs? So I say we respond with anger. Five years ago, how many of us would have believed that protests would be held in Dallas, Texas, in the Bible Belt, in support of Palestine? That the Capitol building, where all of these Mal'unin live, where all of them work, where the very support for Israel begins, is filled with hundreds of people proudly wearing the flag of Palestine and chanting for an end of the oppression and the occupation. That is the movement that we should lead. Because although there are many allies for the Palestinian movement, there are many within the Jewish community, within the non-religious community, within the Christian community, and within the Muslim community, there is no community like the Shia community. We are the Shia of Ahl al-Bayt alayhim as -salam. We are the Shia of Imam Ali, of the speech of Sayyid al-Qaqir. We are the speech of Imam al-Husayn, but more so than anything. Let us remember Sayyid 
Hazrat Zainab alayhi salam alone in Damascus, faced with the beheaded head of her brother, abused, chained, insulted, harassed, and humiliated, did she back down? Did she stay silent? As unfortunately, our community has stayed silent for 20 years. Did she say that just because I cannot support this or this, I'm not going to do anything? No. Sayyida Zainab alayhi salam took a stance that no leader on this earth has ever taken a stance like it. She rose up in the face of the man who ordered the assault on her brother. In the face of the man who led the army against her brother. The face of the man who beheaded her brother. And she said, فَوَاللَّهِ لَا تَمْحُ ذِكْرَنَا so we today as Shia of Ahl al-Bayt, when we are remembering those that have been lost in Palestine, when we are remembering the children, the mothers, the fathers, the aunts, the uncles, the churches, the mosques, the hospitals, and we are looking at our government in the United States that is responsible for this occupation, we have to take the stand and say, فَوَاللَّهِ لَا تَمْحُ ذِكْرَنَا if they charge us with anti-Semitism for arguing for the human rights of our brothers and sisters in Palestine, we stand and we say, فَوَاللَّهِ لَا تَمْحُ ذِكْرَنَا If our campuses attempt to silence their students for standing up for Palestine, we come back stronger and we say, فَوَاللَّهِ لَا تَمْحُ ذِكْرَنَا If our employers seek to fire us for our stance, we say, فَوَاللَّهِ لَا تَمْحُ ذِكْرَنَا The cause of the Palestinians is, as Sayyidna mentioned, a moral issue. And as the mothers have not backed down over 70 years, as the fathers have not backed down, as the journalists have not backed down, as the children have not backed down, as Shireen Abu Aqlin never backed down, we are not going to back down. While our Palestinian brothers and sisters stand under siege in Gaza, calling out for help, we will be the people who answer their help. So I tell you, brothers and sisters, be sad, cry. We should, we should cry. But we should also be angry. We should also recognize what little has been done and what more needs to be done. And we should embody the lessons of Ahl al-Bayt, the lessons of Muharram, the lessons of Karbala. And in our wait and hope for Imam Mahdi, embody the idea that we will pursue justice until the Imam comes and brings us to justice, inshaAllah. So for the arwah of the citizens of Palestine, for all the shuhada of the orphans, the mothers, the daughters, everyone, for all of them right now, wondering if they will survive until the next prayer, I ask you all to remember the lessons. If you are a student, look for your SJP on campus. If there is not one, start one. If you are an adult and an employee, look as to how you can support your kids at their campuses to advocate. And inshallah, this movement does not fade away. It does not become a trend. And inshallah, one day we see a free Palestine. So I ask you all, inshallah, لتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان ولرفع البلاء عن إخواننا في فلسطين الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد مسبوقة بسورة الفاتحة. الله.